Praise you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. And for us, every day is Resurrection Day. Every day is discovering the newness of life. And that life eternal. Death has lost its state. Praise the Lord. We close our eyes in this world. Only to open them in the kingdom of God. Amen. Reality. Praise the Lord. What a great and mighty God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for loving us. Unlovable as we were. And yet you love us as your only child. And we bless you for it today. And thank you, Jesus. God bless all of you. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Thank God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Great job as always, Tim. We appreciate it so much. And uh, Suzanne and Jody for leading us in worship. And all of your testimonies that you shared this morning. And uh, you'll see when I get into the message this morning, you all are right on. Praise God. Praise God. But uh, from Tim all the way through the testimonies, may God just continue to speak to us. We're so grateful to Mike and Suzanne for all that they do yes. continuously, yes. not just here on Sunday morning, but the things that they do to prepare for yes. us. I'm just so grateful to the Lord for them yes. and for all of you. And uh, for those of you that are joining us on Facebook and yes. online, we, we appreciate you being with us so much, and we just... Pray that you're having a wonderful Resurrection Day, that you're celebrating this day with family and friends and, and getting to enjoy it and uh, just relish in what God has done for us and share that that great, I don't want to call it a vibe, you know, but it's, it's such a wonderful feeling yeah. Yeah. that you just wish everyone could experience yes. it. Every, and I, I know we say this, but it's true. You think, how, how in the world yep. can people live without God? I know. Without an a relationship without a knowledge of his goodness and his mercy toward us. So praise the Lord. Uh, we are we are special because he has declared us that. If God chose us, man, I mean, that's yes, it's something special to be a yes. part of. It. We're just grateful that we have been chosen to participate in his kingdom, especially in this last day. Yeah. Lord, we'll have such an opportunity to have an impact on how this world rolls out, how it finishes up, yeah. and the numbers, the millions that will come to know Jesus and be with him forever. Right. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. So glory to God. Resurrection morning, and yes. it's a good time to be alive. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I almost feel guilty doing this, but I can't help myself. <laughs> the, the first time I got a universal remote control, I thought to myself, this changes everything. <laughs> I was talking to some of the kids the other day who had a big, huge, I mean, multiple relish trays and all different kinds of things on it uh, before we ate. And uh, I, I was talking to one of the kids. I said, you know, knowledge is knowing a tomato is a fruit. Wisdom is not putting it in a fruit salad. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I own the world's worst thesaurus. Not only is it awful, it's awful. <laughs> I doubt, therefore I might be. <laughs> uh, okay, praise the Lord. You've suffered enough. <laughs> I mean, after all, Jesus did bear our pain and sorrow. Yeah, so. he did. <laughs> you can let it go. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is good. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go to the Word of God this morning, and I want to start uh, at first. Uh, first, let's begin with Mark chapter 14, and then we'll read verses 32 through 42. Mark 14, verses 32 through 42. And I, this will be a little different, probably, than the typical uh, Easter message, but... Uh, Maybe just in the way that I'm getting it unraveled out of my head. Still preaching the resurrection for sure, but just maybe in a little bit different way than I have in the past. Maybe so. He says, They came to a place which was named Gethsemane, and he saith to his disciples, Sit ye here while I shall pray. 
And he taketh with him Peter and John, James and John and began to be sore amazed and to be very heavy. That word actually says is deeply distressed and troubled. This is Jesus now, the man. Right. He go into the garden knowing what's before him. And he's, he said, my soul is exceeding sorrowful unto death. Tarry ye here and watch. And he went forward a little and fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what thou wilt. And he cometh and findeth him sleeping and saith unto Peter and Simon, Sleepest thou? Couldst not thou watch one hour? Watch ye and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. The spirit truly is ready, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed and spake the same words. Now he wasn't talking about them. He was talking about him. His spirit was willing, but his flesh didn't want to do this. It was agonizing over the thought of all that he was going to have to go through. And when he returned, he found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. Neither wist they what to answer him. And he cometh the third time and saith unto them, Sleep on now, and take your rest. It's enough. The hour is come. Behold, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise up. Let us go. Lo, he that betrayeth me is at hand. Now you've got to remember, these disciples still hadn't grasped the idea that he's going to be crucified. They're, they're still believing that he's going to turn this whole thing upside down and Rome's going to be overthrown and, and Israel is now going to be the, you know, the leading nation and so on and so forth. That, that's still what's in their heads. So let's go to John now, chapter 20. John 20, verse 11 through 29. But Mary stood without at the sepulcher, weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulcher. And see if two angels in white sitting, the one at the head, the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. They say unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She saith unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing, and knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She, supposing him to be the gardener, saith unto him, Sir, if thou have borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus saith unto her, Mary. She turned herself and saith unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Jesus saith unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brethren, and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father, and your Father, and to my God, and your God. Mm -hmm. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord, and that he had spoken these things to her. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus, and stood in the midst, and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. And when he, had, when he had said this, he breathed on them, and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sin ye remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. Praise the Lord. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord, but he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days again his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, 
my Lord and my God. And Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. Praise God. Jesus is still believed in. He's still followed. Still working his miracles. Why? Because he who died is alive. Yes. He's our Savior. Yes. Our Lord and our God. Yes. Our older brother. Yes. He's everything. Yes. The disciples, whose dreams of earthly uh, messianic glory were shattered at the cross, because they had a whole different idea of what the agenda was. But the resurrection, without which they would have never regrouped after the running in fear for their own lives, they would have never believed. After watching their first ideas of Jesus' purpose and mission explode right in front of them, all they thought was going to happen, all of a sudden now he's dead. Not only is he dead, he's been mutilated. He's been humiliated. Their hopes were shattered. Look at 2 Peter 1 16. 2 Peter 1 16. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Yes. Yes. Praise yes. God. Yes. We have stepped into the light of the solid facts of the resurrection. Yes. And we can see Jesus is Lord. Yes. Forgiveness of sin is ours. Yes. And heaven is our eternal home with him. Yes. Praise the Lord. That's our reality. Yes. Yes. We have, we're not believing some fairy tale. We have believed in the Lord yes. and have experienced yes. his majesty, his glory, yes. his resurrection power. Yes. Praise the Lord. Mark 14, verse 36 I just want to make this about what Jesus was trying to say and what he was trying to accomplish with his disciples and with everyone that he encountered. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible unto you. Take away this cup from me. <clears throat> Nevertheless, not what I will, but what thou wilt. Mm -hmm. All of us have probably prayed yes. that first part. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Father, yes. you can do anything. Yeah. Please don't let this happen. Right. Take this away. Stop this. But few of us ever say, yeah. nevertheless, yeah. not what I want, but what you want. Amen. The first step Jesus. in dealing with disappointment, and if you've lived any time at all, and I can see you all have, you've had disappointment. Yeah. You've had discouragement. Yeah. And the first step in dealing with that is to clarify what our expectations were in the first place. Yeah. Too many times people feel that God has let them down because we've confused human expectations with biblical faith. Mm -hmm. We've confused with what my agenda is or what my desire is right. with what God's agenda or what God's desire is. We put the label faith on our human hopes and our dreams and stood on God's nature and God's promises to us. <clears throat> then we get bent out of shape when those hopes and dreams don't work out. We fall into the trap of telling God what to do. And then we don't even recognize God's faithfulness because we have our own preconceived notions about how God should work. Mm -hmm. Jesus' prayer in the garden is the model of biblical prayer. Jesus wasn't praying out of human expectations, but out of a deep trust in God's character and God's love yes. and his faithfulness. The result, he yielded to God's plan rather than being disappointed that God wasn't doing things his way. Only God can produce what God promises. Right. Hebrews 11.1 1 tells us without faith,
Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. What you learn over time is that faith always involves patience. There's no faith apart from patience. And the truth is, there's no patience apart from faith. You're impatient. You're angry. You're frustrated. You're whatever. Biblical faith isn't idle hope. It's not wishful thinking. It's not dreaming about a possibility. It's basing our expectations on the reality at the center of everything, which is God himself. We can always count on God to keep his promises. He's faithful to his word. He cannot break his word. He and his word are one. When our expectations are based on God's character and God's love, we're never going to be disappointed. Look at Revelation 1.18. Tim quoted from there earlier. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I'm alive forevermore. Uh Amen. So be it. And have the keys of hell and of death. Praise the Lord. You know, behold, it's just an old-fashioned way of saying, check this out. (laughs) Right? Have a look at this. He's simply saying, look here. And the conclusion of history adds to that, look only here. The answers are nowhere else. And in saying, I'm alive and for, forevermore, he adds, and I have the keys of death and of hell. In other words, there is no force, there is no fury, there is no power that can conquer your life when you place yourself in the hands of the living Lord. Look, is what he says, and live. Yes. Praise God. God simply expects us to trust him. Yes. But so many of us live under a false sense of guilt Because we feel we're never going to live up to what we perceive to be God's expectation for us. But there's another result of living by our own expectations. The human mind will limit the manifestations only to its visualized results or what we can imagine. Mm -hmm. Religious people. That's why they're so angry at non-religious, spiritualizing people. It's because they image in their mind what God would do and how God should do it and how it should happen and then I'm going to try to live up to that expectation only to know deep down inside they cannot do it. it. So our visualization has to change. We have to see through the eyes of God. We've got to think the way God thinks and the only way you can do it is by the word of God. We end up always if we have that frame of mind we always end up underestimating what God wants to do. We limit it to our human understanding. And inevitably, we undershoot, and the result is we're disillusioned. Praise the Lord. Look at Ephesians 3 and verse 20. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Unto him. It's able to do exceeding abundantly above anything we could ask or think or imagine. So when God works, what he's doing will always be beyond our ability to visualize. A God-given vision requires God-given understanding. So he wants you to base your expectations on his character, his promises, his word. Because we can't do it in our own natural mind. Our own natural reasoning doesn't fit. Mm-hmm. We have to look to what he's capable of doing, which is anything. He's trying to give us a vision that's beyond anything our human mind can create. He's trying to give us the mind of God. You have the yes. mind of Christ. He's saying, I want you to operate from that. Yes. What was the mind of Christ? Make this thing go away if it's any way possible. Don't make me go through it. Don't make me have to suffer this. Don't make me have to deal with this. But nevertheless, you're the only one that really knows how this thing is supposed to work out. So just let me trust you. Romans 6, verses 6 through 8. Romans 6, 
six through eight. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. There is no sin. We're dead as far as sin is concerned. We died with him. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Yes. Praise the Lord. So not every resurrection is the same. But everybody can share in the same resurrection. Yes. Praise the Lord. Jesus wants us to understand how his resurrection life works for us. In and through us. Right. Mark 5, verses 35 and 36. While he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain which said, Thy daughter is dead. Why troublest thou the master any further? As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he saith unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. I mean, does that sound crazy yeah. to anybody who isn't thinking right. from God's promises? Romans 5, 1 through 5. Our perceptions can control us and manipulate us and keep us from really discovering the promises of God in our lives, the reality of God's resurrection life. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. By whom also we have... Now, what, where are people missing this? Therefore, being justified by faith, justified just as if nothing had ever... You'd never done anything wrong. We'll never do anything wrong. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. God is not angry because we haven't done anything. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Yes. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is yes. given unto us. Yes. The love of God. Yes. Praise the Lord. Biblical faith that is based on the character of God will not disappoint you. He cannot do anything bad in your life. Regardless of how it might appear to you, regardless of right. what we might feel, that right. all is lost, oh, the whole thing's falling apart, and what's, what's going to happen? God can't do anything bad to us. He, it's impossible for Him to. Right. Yes. Look at Psalms 27, 13, and 14. I believe John or, uh, Don mentioned this. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. How many have felt that? I would have just gave up yeah. if I hadn't believed that God was going to show himself right. mighty in this world. That's right. Amen. In this land where we are today. Yes. Wait on the Lord. Be of good cheer or good courage and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Yes. And you will mount up with wings as eagles. Yes. The weak will no longer be weak. The weak will say, I am strong. Yes. Amen? Yes. Praise the Lord. God prepares his vessels through failure and restoration. Yes. He doesn't cause us to fail, but he knows we fail. Yes. And so the way he prepares us is through our failures, he restores us. Yes. Praise God. When he restores, he fully restores. Yes. He doesn't just fix us up a little bit. We're a new creatures. We're all, all together different. We are children of God. John 11, verses 25 and 26. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? See, we that have been restored by Jesus are not patched up flesh. 
We're not fixed up humans. Amen. We are new creations. We are a whole new species, the Bible says in one translation. We are equipped saints. New creations. Prepared. God doesn't ask us to do something he doesn't prepare us to do. He doesn't ask us to do something he hasn't equipped us to do. Right. Praise the Lord. Matthew 28, verses 5 through 8. Matthew 25, or excuse me, Matthew 28, 5 through 8. And the angel answered and said unto the woman, or to the women, Fear not, for I know, for I know that you seek Jesus, which was crucified. He's not here, for he's risen, as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay. Go quickly, tell his disciples that he's risen from the dead, and behold, he goeth before you into Galilee, and there shall ye see him. Lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulcher with fear and great joy, and did run to bring his disciples the word. Praise the Lord. We are equipped. We are prepared to declare the glory and the grace of God. Something's happened in our hearts. Mm -hmm. Something that enables us to grasp the essence of where sin abounded, grace did much more. Yes. Yes. People don't realize, religious people don't realize, no. they are debasing what God has done. Yes, they're they degrading are. it, they're bringing it down to a human level, like you're gonna do something that's going to make this better than what God did? Yeah. No, you're going to end up with an Ishmael. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And a nightmare that will follow you forever. Yeah. Let's go to Genesis chapter 25 and verse 8. Abram gave up the ghost and died in a good old age. An old man and full of years and was gathered to his people. One translation says he was an old man satisfied with life. He was ready. What an epitaph for anybody at any age for that matter. What an interesting statement though from a man who lived as long as Abraham did and made as many obvious blunders Abraham, during his life, fell into cowardice, deceit, yeah. and disobedience, outright disobedience. Yeah. He tried to make God's promises come to pass based on his own expectations yeah. rather than trusting God's character and God's love. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yet he died an old man yeah. satisfied with life by grace yes. through faith. Yes. 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 Praise the Lord. Don't tell me he didn't know that he had done things he shouldn't have done. Right. Right. But he knew the love, the grace, and the goodness of God. Yes. And that's why he could say, he gave up the ghost. He died at a ripe old age. Yes. Yes. Satisfied yes. with life. Like it was, it's been good. Yeah. Yes. Did well. Thank you. Romans 8 and 1 says what Abraham said in a way. There is therefore now no condemnation yes. for those who are in Christ walk not after the flesh right. but after the spirit yes. because of the resurrection condemnation doesn't exist no. only for those who are perceiving it in their own imagination mm -hmm. the liberating truth of the gospel is no condemnation yes. anybody preaching condemnation doesn't know the gospel Right. And I'm not trying to be a smart aleck. I'm just no. saying that's the facts. No, you're right. Romans 6, verses 4 and 5. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Yes. yes. Now he's not telling us we're dead in Christ. He's not saying stop living, but stop the fear of dying. Yeah. Don't 
retreat from reality, but re-enter into life. Right. And that comes when we come to a complete stop at Jesus' empty tomb. Yes. And rejoice in the triumph of his resurrection. Yes. The result of his trusting God's love and goodness yes. rather than his natural human mind. Yes. When Peter and John looked into the empty tomb, they found the grave clothes that Jesus had left behind. And they were neatly folded, just carefully arranged, right where he dismantled them, right where he took them off. And the truth is, what he's telling us, even here, suggests that there's a whole new order at the resurrection going forward. Things are going to be changed. So let's, I, I'm going to read a lengthy portion here from John. But in John chapter 20, verses 4 through 29, he neatly, he, he disrobed the dead clothes, the, the, the grave clothes, right? Mm -hmm. And he carefully places them right where he had taken them off. And they're telling us something. He's trying to tell us something with that. He could have just taken them out and thrown them in the ditch or yeah. done anything with them. They could have just vanished. But they didn't. He left them there for a reason. And so they ran both together, and the other disciple did outrun Peter and came first to the sepulcher. He, stooping down and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying, yet went he not in. Then comes Simon Peter following him and went into the sepulcher and seeth the linen clothes lying. The napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went in also that other disciple, which came first to the sepulcher, and he saw and believed. And as yet they knew not the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. They were struggling with his crucifixion. Now they're struggling with, where did he go? Yeah. Then the disciples went away again unto their own home. But Mary stood without at the sepulcher, weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulcher. And see two angels in white sitting, the one at the head, the other at the foot, where the body of Jesus had lain. And they say unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? And she saith unto them, Because they've taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And then, when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing, and knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? And she, supposing him to be the gardener, saith unto him, Sir, if thou hast borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said unto her, Mary, she turned herself and said unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. And Jesus saith unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father, but go to my brethren, and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father, and your Father, to my God, and your God. And Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord, and that he had spoken these things unto her. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side, and then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father has sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said thus, he breathed on them, and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins you remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins you retain them are retained. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. And the other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. And he said unto them, Except I see his hand, the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. After eight days again his disciples were with them, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst, and said, Peace be unto you. Then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, behold thy hand, reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen me, and yet have believed. Yes. Praise the Lord. The, the explosion of life that breaks the bonds of death has a simple system to it. And I want you to just, with me this morning, Play a little mind game. And step inside the closed tomb with your imagination. Watch the body of Jesus begin to breathe. 
see the Son of God sit up, remove the head wrap, and methodically disrobe himself from the cloth chains that symbolize man's futility. The garments are neatly placed at the spot where he removes each one of them. And as we look, we see him clothed by garments that have no earthly origin. He's taken off the death clothes, the funeral garments, and he's now clothed in something that we don't recognize. It doesn't have an earthly origin. They weren't woven, they weren't sewn, they weren't made from fabric. But they're garments that he's going to wear later that day as he comforts a tearful woman, as he hikes to Emmaus with two troubled disciples. And he dines that evening with those that are closest to him, and yet most of them don't recognize him. He presents himself alive, and they knew it. Not a mental, in, you know, uh, invention, not a phantom experience or some gush of sentiment. They knew. He has taken our filthy rags, our grave clothes, and has clothed us with righteousness, with God himself. Moses shone like a light, and he was just in the presence of God. This was God revealed yeah. to a man, and they couldn't even recognize him until he spoke. They recognized the voice, but they didn't recognize the man. He was clothed in God. It's triumph over fear triumph over religion. Yes. Triumph over tomorrow. Yes. He's risen and has raised us up and seated us with him in heavenly places. Yes. High above all. Let me just read something real quick here. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you to tear ye here in the city of Jerusalem until ye be do. That word literally translates clothed. Until you're clothed with power from on high. Yeah. Yes. He has risen yes. and has raised us up yes. and seated us with him. Yes. In the same clothes. Yes. In the same garments. In God Almighty. High above all. Resurrection Day. Yes, yes Lord. It's Easter. Yes. All things are becoming new. Yes, yes Lord. Not what I will, but what you will, Father. Yes. Be it unto us, even as you have spoken. Yes, yes. Praise God. Give the Lord yes. my hands. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Praise God. He's trying to let us know. What God did in him, he has done exactly the same thing in us. Yes. We've already experienced the only death we're going to experience. Yes, Lord. And that was in Jesus. Yes. Yeah. Praise God. Thank you. What a mighty God we yes. serve. Yes, sir. Yes, Lord. What a good God. Yes. God who has nothing but our best. Yes. In his heart for us. Mm. Nothing in this world can stop us. No. Nothing in this world can even harm us. Oh, that is and think about my brothers, sisters that have passed away. All of yeah. us have lost loved ones, parents. They're not yeah. dead, folks. They are alive yeah. forevermore. Yes. More alive than they have ever been. Yes. Praise God. The one thing the devil still tries to use against us is fear of death. Mm -hmm. and it's a lie from hell. It is. In that last moment, I'm thinking of that one song we sang. It talked yeah. about the fear is gone. Yeah. It's anticipation now. Yes. Excitement. 
course, we love our families, and we want to spend as much time as we can with them. That's the truth is, it's all good. We're not going to be separated. It may seem like a, a separation to them for a brief period of time. But there is no separation for us in heaven. It's eternity. There's no time. He has done this for us. Yes. He has made this our reality. Yes. Resurrection life. Yes. That flows in yes. each and every one of us. The life of God. Robes of righteousness. Yes. Our filthy rags. Yep. It gives us garments whiter yes. than snow. Yes. Praise God. I want Ron to come and uh, lead us in communion this morning. And remembering the covenant. God made through his son by giving his life and shedding his blood on our behalf. Praise God. God bless you. Come on.
resurrection. 